this tiny little rain isn't. We've got rain coming in from all directions at this very moment in time. There he is. Busy scent marking against that termitaria. Hello, mister. Quite nice and relaxed. Right out in the open near the Samaki Swamp. Now, remember, this is 100% live coming to you from the Maasai Mare in Kenya. And if you have any questions about these fantastical beasts, whether they be armoured like the rhino or full of teeth and claws like the lions, uh, hashtag Safari Live on whatever platform you're watching is the best way to get hold of us. Now, you can see he's sort of just contemplating what's going on at the moment, listening carefully. You can probably hear my voice. Do you hear my voice, Black Rhino? Yes, I think you do. He's had a nice mud wallow at some point today, so giving him a bit of protection from the biting insects that are out in force at this time of the year in the Mara. They are such incredible beasts. Absolutely wonderful things to watch. Well, JT, congratulations. JT says, this is my first rhino sighting uh, on Safari Live. Well, there we go, JT. I'm very happy you were able to share your first rhino sighting with us. It is stunning. Now, from where I spotted him from quite a long way away, marching along. Matt is wondering, what predators do rhinos have? Now, very few. They're being very big, and obviously having that pointy horn can cause a bit of trouble for any predator that decides to try to take them on. But uh, lions are the only predator that will sometimes uh, take on a wounded rhino or a young rhino. Uh, otherwise, hyenas... Also, again, very unusually might try to take on a wounded um, wounded or, or young animal. But other than that, they are pretty safe from everything else. Sorry, I thought I spotted something. I just popped the binoculars up for a second. Checking down to Smoky Swamp. The water buck looked a little bit spooked, but I can't see anything there. I think they might have been spooked by some birds taking off. Now, Emma has asked a very interesting question, and that is, why is the black rhino more rare than the white rhino? Now, Emma, in the past, in the 60s and 70s, it was actually the other way around. So, the white rhino was far more rare. The black rhino had a historically much larger distribution through far more diverse, diverse sort of habitats. Uh, to the white rhino and uh, they have now now due to poaching and loss of habitats and loss of big wild areas uh, they have lost a lot of that habitat and therefore a loss of their range of course poaching has also played an incredible incredibly large part in their loss of numbers so the black rhino occurred in a far sort of greater area I've got a nice little map to show you, the historical black rhino range. Oh, that's not going to work. Oh, sorry, I pushed the wrong button. Here we go. Okay, so the green is the historical well-known black rhino range. So as you can see, it stays out of the Congo Basin forests and also out of the highlands of Ethiopia. And then across what you call the Sahil region, which is the big savanna region above the Congo Basin uh, forests, all the way through into the Sahara. Now, probably, what am I thinking, probably 30,000 years ago or so, the Black Rhino Range would have extended right the way into that, what, ooh, darn it, sorry, I keep pushing the wrong button, um, right the way into the, the what is now true desert in the Sahara, uh, because that used to be full of grass uh, and it was a, a lush open grass and probably quite similar to what the Kalahari is now. Now, if we go down, oh, I 
this blooming thingy my bob i don't want to search again sorry one second i keep pushing the wrong blooming button my fat fingers okay there we go we're back okay we're back we're back we're back so there we go now that is the current black rhino uh distribution uh, in in Africa and you can see it's a lot smaller that black area up there in West Africa is where they are extinct now fortunately um, They have been reintroduced into Botswana Zambia and Malawi and uh, There's more than likely probable black rhino still in northern Mozambique Southern Tanzania it doesn't show here, but I, I know for a fact that there are no black rhino left in southern Tanzania I was unfortunately probably one of the last people to ever see a black rhino in the Salu Game Reserve um, before they were unfortunately poached out. But northern Tanzania, Kenya still has. Okay, whoa, the rhino's on the move. Now, of course, Mafuta is asking a question about rhinos and their calves. So Mafuta is wondering why do black rhino calves run behind uh, while white rhino calves one in, run in front. There's a couple of different theories. Um, one of the theories, which I'm not 100% convinced of, is that, well, the black rhino has, which I, I probably think is probably true, has probably better eyesight uh, than white rhino. And uh, so the mother is able to see. Now, young rhino calves, as I said, it's a, it's a theory that I, I haven't researched in, in depth enough to, but I think it might be a bit of a tall story, um, that the white rhino calves, when they're younger, their, their heads aren't as heavy, so they're able to lift their heads quite easily and, and see quite well. As a white rhino ages, it says the op optic nerve stretches, uh, therefore it, its vis vis vision becomes worse as it gets older, so when it's young, its vision is better, therefore they run in the front where there's the black rhino mother's vision is still quite good. This is, however, a boy. And saw him scent marking from a distance. He's found some nice little, uh, probably puzzle bush or whatnot to chew on. Lisa's wondering, what is scarier, a charging black rhino or a charging bull elephant? Well, it all depends on the black rhino or the elephant. Uh, in both cases, you can normally stop the charge with a well-aimed shout or bang on the side of your car or clap your hands. Um, I don't know. For me, I'd say probably a, a proper full elephant charge just because they're so much bigger. Um, black rhino charges are incredibly scary, don't get me wrong. I've climbed a few trees to get out of their way in my, my years in the bush. Um, but oh, difficult. I would probably say that a, a, a big bull elephant in full charge is, is, is more scary. There's a young bull elephant in the background there, as, long, as well as waterbuck. It's quite nice, and this is really nice to see these rhinos right out in the open. And they do like to come down towards the Samaki Swamp at this time of the day. And there are these tiny little puzzle bushes and caper bushes that are growing. And even though it looks like they're grazing grass, they're not. In fact, they are, they are eating bushes that are just popping through, uh, through the grass. So there we go. There we go. Arch has found some bushes growing along. That's exactly what he's after. So the ancestors of both our black and white rhino were already present in Africa about 10 million years ago. Um, and they had a common ancestral species um, that they both diverged from. And of, of course, that it, it, was, it was quite a easy, not easy, but uh, you can see why the evolutionary uh, diversion from their, their common ancestor happened. So one focused on eating trees and bushes as while the other focused on eating, of course, grass. I can see, look at his ears. I love how attentive. So, of course, their eyesight's not so great. 
Um, so they do rely heavily on their smell and hearing uh, to to listen to potential threats or just what's going on around them in general. Well, he's found another little tasty treat. Um, 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 um. Now you can quite easily see the very distinct hooked lip on on the on the black runner. Wait, what was that behind him? Did you see that? That white there. Oh, it's a hippo in the mud. It's his tail splashing. That are um. That... It's, well, we've decided to. We've got about oh, I don't know eight nine minutes before the rain hits us. So while it's clear and beautiful, uh, we decided to spend more time with this beautiful big black rhino bull. Now, one would think that the Mara was a perfect ecosystem for white rhinoceros, yet you only get black rhino here. And uh, strange enough, white rhino never really occurred in this part of Africa. So black and white rhino split it about four to five million years ago. And uh, what are those water bucks seen? Sorry, they're just looking very intently. I think they're just watching other water buck. And uh, so the historic white rhino range of the northern white rhino, and of course the northern white rhino, Sudan, has been got, getting quite a lot of uh, press recently, um, did not actually include Kenya. So it was the northern white rhino's natural distribution was northern Congo, uh, southern Sudan, and uh, western Uganda. Now, however, they are not there at the moment, there, well, especially in Congo and Sudan. There have been some introduced into Kenya and into Uganda. And uh, there, were, there was a population of white rhinos that were probably on their way up from the southern population that, it were, that used to occur just across the Zambezi River around Livingston and, and Victoria Falls. And there is a small reintroduced population there. However, they was it was a very tiny population. White rhino traditionally only occurred uh, in those three Central African countries and then the southern subspecies, South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. Now, there is a very, very valid reason for this. Now, even though the Mara is this glorious grassland that would be ideal for white rhino, uh, for those different populations of white rhino to have moved into this area from where they, they sort of specialized, they have to go through quite a lot of either forest or miombo woodland, both of which are not very good for white rhino at all. And the, the grasses are not of a high nutrient value. So it would have been very difficult for those two distinct populations to, to, to spread into the Mara. Not to say they wouldn't have got here eventually, but it, it's very difficult to say that now, of course, because the whole whole of Africa has completely changed in terms of um, the human human element and and how we have changed the ecosystem and and with farming and and, and all those type of things, damming and all sorts of things like that. So we can show you. I can show you the historical. Um, ah, I keep pushing them. Oh, there we go. So there we go. So those are the historic. So this is pre the influence of man uh, decimating the rhino populations. Those are your two white rhino populations. So you can see the southern white rhino, far more widespread. And of course, there's a lot more open grasslands in these areas. And, uh, and you can see they didn't push too far uh, beyond that boundary there in South Africa was, was the Orange River, which is a very big river. So across Botswana, Zimbabwe, uh, into southern Angola, Namibia, and the majority of Mozambique. Now, Mozambique, this top corner of Mozambique, Tanzania, and the whoopsie, majority of Zambia are all that Miombo woodland I was talking about that is really not great um, for your grazing species. And even the grazing species you find in that Miombo woodland are quite small. Now, this top part of DRC in South Sudan is magnificent grasslands. Um, and uh, unfortunately, that area is very, very hard hit by poaching and, and war. So that's the, one of the biggest problems when it came to conserving the northern white rhino was actually Joseph Coney. That is sort of core um, 
what's it, uh, the, I've forgotten his name, Lib People's, I can't remember, but Coney, who ran that uh, absolutely despicable um, sort of basically war militia that caused absolute havoc over that area um, amongst the people. So it made any conservation in that area very, very difficult. So, of course, this is Kenya here. Now, I'm just going to go out a bit so we can see. Now, this is where white rhino have... Ah, oh, I keep doing that. What have I done? Oh, this... oh there we go. <laughs> um, ah! Sorry, my fat fingers are not good. There we go. Um, so, this is where white rhino have been reintroduced or introduced. So, you can see South Africa... Oh, anyway, let me try that one more time. So there we go. South Africa in the brown is the only country that has managed to keep rhino alive for the, the whole of the period. They've never been extinct or needed to be reintroduced into, the, into South Africa. They have been reintroduced into parts of South Africa where they might have become locally extinct, and especially now with the uh, advent of the, the, the private game reserve, a lot of private rhino owners are around. Now, that Zambia... They've been reintroduced into parts of Zambia, and uh, and and and, but traditionally they only occurred in that bottom section right on the border of Botswana, um, and then of course the northern white rhino has been put into Kenya and into protected areas in Uganda. So very very interesting there. So isn't that fascinating? Now of course um, there's been reintroduction of black rhino into Central Africa. Um, recently and uh, and of uh, there's a uh, yuri and, and pippa from juma actually played a very important part in the reintroduction of black rhino into rwanda into akagera national park so that's a quite an interesting story there so african parks um and they try to keep that northern black rhino subspecies even when they were sent to south africa for protection in the in, on the private game farms and, and and game breeding facilities they've tried to make sure that the genetics of the northern black rhino and the southern black rhino weren't mixed because there was always the plan when things were more stable to reintroduce that northern subspecies back into areas where it occurred naturally now let's give you one last look at that rhino and i'm just keeping a close eye on the rain behind me because it is starting to drip and the wind is starting to howl but the rain of course is not going to phase that big boy in the slightest and another animal that probably wouldn't mind the rain today especially if they've got big fat bellies are the African wild dogs with Tristan Yes, we're still with that beautiful black rhino and a lovely herd of ellies in the background. Now, generally, rhinos and elephants will ignore each other, but in certain cases, they are elephants, not so much in the Mara, but in places where there is a serious competition for water. Elephants have been known to kill rhinos. And uh, in one particular park in South Africa, the Pilonsberg, there was a, a naughty group of elephant bulls who went on a rhino killing spree, actually, killing both black and white rhino. Now, as most of you know, the scientific name, I should hope, is that you do know it, for the black rhino is Diceros bicornis. But, of course, old Carl Linnaeus, back in the good old days when he was sort of sorting out the taxonomy of all the animals, um, dubbed the black rhino a rhinoceros bicornis, which bicornis means two-horned. And uh, it was quite funny because it was um, actually an accident because it was based off the skull of an Indian rhinoceros, which has obviously got a si single horn, that a collector had artificially stuck um, a second horn onto. And uh, it, it took a while before this was only sorted out um, and the black rhino was far more well quite often more well known before the white rhino obviously of course because it had a much bigger distribution and the the white rhino was only officially noted as a separate species in 1812 so quite a long time So for many, many years, so probably for close on 20 or 30 years, there was only thought to be one species. Oh, there's two little Eddie Bulls having a go at each other in the background. 
Um, there was only there was thought to be only one species of rhino in Africa, um, uh, the double horned rhino. And of course, as you know, both our rhino species in Africa have double horns. So and quite interesting that at the original double horned rhino and where the black rhino gets um, the bicornus of its scientific name from comes from a mistake. And where some person stuck <laughs> a separate horn onto a skull of a single horned um, Indian rhinoceros. Kathy is wondering if I've ever seen a rhino fight. I have, Kathy. I've seen some pretty spectacular rhino fights, both black and white rhino fights. Um, and they can be very ferocious and go on for a long time. And uh, generally it is between the males and uh, you will even see male rhinos push out and really attack young male rhinos. But it's quite interesting because they will, for quite a long period of time, accept a young male rhino, uh, rhino not lion, uh, within their territory. But it's when that young male starts showing signs of scent marking that means he could be a potential threat to the mating of the dominant male in the area that 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 the the male will now all of a sudden decide it is time for that one to go and outside of course of the terrible poaching that happens of the rhinos that traditionally the biggest killer of rhinos would be other rhinos fighting um, even males kill females accidentally sometimes when they're trying to separate them from their calves um, if they're interested in mating. But we are going to now brave the weather and head slowly back towards the escarpment where it is still raining, but we've been lucky enough that it has sort of petered out a little bit. But it is always incredibly special to be able to spend time with a, an animal like a black rhino and specifically in an area like this where we can see them so well out in the open. Now, my good friend Scotty D is out and about at Juma and he's got a bird that every frog in the Lowfelt is absolutely petrified of.